Brother Roland sitting over here on the front seat has told me that I've just mistreated him terribly across the years, getting on his toes. Brother Roland, you always remember I, I make the statement before I get on your toes out here in the congregation. I, I work mine over too. <laughs> I preach to myself first. And I come up with this thinking that if my message isn't any good for me, why should I expect it to do anything for you? I think a preacher ought to think of his messages that way. If it doesn't do anything for him, why should he expect it to do anything for those who listen? You may think the text announced this morning is unusual for this time of the year, but I hope before I'm through to get my point over in it having something to do not only with the Christmas season, but the whole year. I heard Dr. Wallace Bassett say one time that we're funny people. He said every Sunday, every Sunday we ought to remember that we're serving a resurrected Lord, a living Lord. He said we make much of it one Sunday during the year, Easter Sunday. He said whenever Sunday we ought to remember that we're serving a living Lord who gained the victory over death, hell, and the grave. And he was so right, wasn't he? You know, we're like that about Christmas. We make a great deal to do about the birth of Christ at Christmas time. When the truth of the matter is, we need to remember all the year through that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the Christmas gift. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I like to preach about the love of God. I'd rather preach, I guess, about the love of God than anything I can think of. How marvelous, how wonderful, how great even beyond understanding is the love of God. When I think of it in a personal way, it just overwhelms me. When I think that God loved me enough that he let Jesus come and die for me on Calvary's cross, forgetting everyone else in the world, that's how much God loved me. To let Jesus come and die on the cross for me. Of course, you're included and everyone else is included, but I want to tell you something. When we take it in a personal way, <laughs> it gets next to us, doesn't it? Just think, that's how much God loved us. That's why we have Christmas. God so loved the world that he let Jesus come and pay our sin debt. That's why he came, to pay our sin debt. And he came because God loves us. But you know what? A preacher cannot, he absolutely cannot be true to his calling and true to his God without preaching the whole truth. And there's more in the Bible than the portions of it that tells us of the love of God. I'm glad a great part of the Bible tells us directly and indirectly of the love of God. But there's more and the whole thing has to be preached and the whole thing needs to be preached. A preacher who just preached about the love of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God and the forgiveness of God and never preached about sin and the wrath of God wouldn't be true. It wouldn't be true. We have to preach about, uh, preach about sin. In order to be faithful, we have to warn people about sin. In order to be true to our calling, we have to tell people again and again what sin has done and what sin is doing and what sin will do. It's unpleasant, but it needs to be preached. Just think about what sin has done to man. You go back to the beginning. Adam and Eve were doing fine, weren't they, in the Garden of Eden until they sinned. Living in a paradise, not a care in the world, not a tear had ever been heard of, not a pain 
pain had ever been felt. No heartache had been known. What changed it? Why has man across the centuries that followed been plagued with all of these things? The answer is a little three-letter word, and I say again, preachers need to talk about it, and I think many of them need to talk about it far more than they do. There's one thing that you can say when I'm gone that I have preached the whole truth to you. I told you about sin just the same as telling you about the love of God, and I'm glad I can say that as I come near the close of my ministry. Just think how terrible sin is and, and what it's done. Rivers of tears have been shed because of sin. Millions and millions of hearts have been broken because of sin. Millions and millions and millions of lives have been wrecked because of sin. This whole world has known and knows today trouble untold. You can't even describe the miseries that men are going through today all over the world because of sin. Yes, people need to be told about sin. Because of what it's done to man, because of what it's doing to man, because of what it is going to do to man. And you know what? I think this needs to be uh, mentioned very much so. We need to think about not only what sin has done to man, but what sin has done to God. You ever thought of that? What sin has done to God. Sin has hurt the heart of God. And sin continues to hurt the heart of God. And sin will continue to hurt the heart of God as long as time here shall last. The Bible says God hates sin. But the Bible also tells us in unmistakable terms that God loves sinners. And I'm glad for that, aren't you? I can understand him hating sin, and I think we ought to hate sin, but God loves sinners. Look what sin has done to God. It cost him the life of his son on a cruel cross. No one will ever convince me that this is not true. The saddest moment that God has ever experienced was when he heard the cry, from Calvary's hillside over which he had cast darkness. He heard in the darkness that hovered over Calvary, he heard this cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I don't think any moment in the history of all the ages ever hurt the, the heart of God like that cry. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why did he forsake him? Why did that cry come about? Why was it necessary? Why did it take place? Sin. Sin. If there had been no sin, then no one would have had to die for sinners. If there had been no sin, Christ would not, have, would not have had to come and sacrifice himself on the cross. Look what sin has done to man. Look what sin has done to God. Look what sin is doing today. We're living in unusual times. Anyone with half sense will admit that, won't they? We're living in unusual times. And I suppose... That in the day in which you and I live, there's more sin in the world than ever before. I think that uh, ample proof of that would be in the fact that there are many, many more people living in the world today, as far as we know, than ever before. And every person's a sinner, so that means there is more sin in the world today than ever before and certainly things are more sinful today than we've seen them in our lifetime the more